the title of my presentation is the Red Balloon Grand Challenge, Crowdsourcing and Social Networking. On December 5th, 2009, there was a piece of headline news. MIT Media Lab team won the Red Balloon Grand Challenge. What is the Red Balloon Grand Challenge? It was on October 29, 2009, when DARPA celebrated the 40th anniversary of the ARPANET, they announced a grand challenge called the Red Balloon Grand Challenge. On a certain day, DARPA will deploy and anchor 10 diameter 8 feet red balloons all over the United States. The individual or the team, they can identify the locations these 10 red balloons first will win a 40,000 US dollar prize. Why is DAPA interested in such a grand challenge? Because they want to examine and understand two important concepts behind this grand challenge, crowdsourcing and social networking. In Thomas Friedman's famous book, the world is flat. He said that in the late 20th century, there were, there were 10 forces that helped to flatten the world. One of them is outsourcing. Outsourcing is not a new concept. Sending your dirty linen to the laundry is outsourcing. However, with the rapid development of computer communication and transportation technology, we can outsource software development to India, chip fabrication to Taiwan, and call centers to the Philippines. However, when you outsource a work, usually you have a partner, you have a contract with this partner. On the other hand, crowdsourcing, the word comes from crowd outsourcing, is you have multiple partners. You may not have a contract with any one of them. You may not even know who they are, but you said, I have a problem. See who can solve the problem for me, and you will be or may be rewarded. Let me give you a few examples of crowdsourcing. You give a big prize for a difficult mathematics problem. Whoever can solve the problem will win a million US dollars prize. Indeed, in the year 2000, the Clay Foundation in Boston has set up seven millennium prizes. These are seven difficult mathematical problems. Whoever can solve it will win a million US dollars. And the latest one was the solution of the Poincaré conjecture. This is indeed an example of outsourcing. The Amazon Mechanical Turk is an example. Turk actually is the name of an automaton in the 18th century. Supposedly, it is an automaton that can play chess. Actually, hiding inside was a human being, a chess master. Amazon.com set up a web service. They call it Mechanical Turk. Indeed, for people who have problems, that could be quite difficult for a computer to solve and could be quite easily be solved by human beings, such as tracing the outlines of a human figures in a picture. And by posting questions on the Amazon Mechanical Turk, you are outsourcing this to the public, and usually the reward is one or two cents US dollars. Wikipedia is a good example, as we all know, Although the founder of Wikipedia, Jimmy Wei, doesn't like the term crowdsourcing because he feels that Wikipedia has a significant cooperation uh, feature that crowdsourcing doesn't cover. Emergency reporting. Uh, recently, in the earthquake in Haiti, information was sent out by telephones through Twitters. And some of them were even translated from French into English. 
and then send back to the Air Force so that they can go there to help. And then, of course, what is social networking? Again, social networking is not a new idea. Making friends, connecting people for the purpose of exchanging information and goodwills. Marriage, church, golf club, alumni, fraternity, sorority, cocktail parties. These are all instruments for us to build up our social networks. I was told at MIT, any presentation must include some experimental results and some mathematical theorems. So let me indeed call some experimental results and mathematical theorems in the social networking area. One, of course, is the well-known six-degree separation principle. The distance between any two persons in the world is six or smaller. There is a theorem called the friendlier friends. On the average, your friends have more friends than you do. And it is really a beauty. And then, of course, there's a theorem says that if every two persons have a unique common friend, then there is a politician who knows everybody. <laughs> so indeed, as I said, social networking is not a new activity. But with the development of computer and communication technology, social networking indeed found new instruments. First of all, telephone. On the telephone, people can exchange gossips. Electronic mail. Since the invention of ARPANET for the almost first 20 years, the only killer application was electronic mail. Telephone and electronic mail are one-to-one -one communications. Then later on, we have bulletin board systems, we have block, we have YouTube, and these are one-to-many communication systems. But these days, we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have MySpace, we have Plurk, and this is a many-to-many, -many, a big mess communication system. Take Twitter as an example. Any member of the Twitter community can send out short messages. Each of them can contain up to 140 letters. Anyone who is a follower of this individual will automatically receive this short message, which is called a tweet. And one can subscribe to be the follower of any famous people, people you like or people you dislike in the Twitter community. Uh, President Obama has, according to my statistics last Sunday, 4 million and 300 some thousand followers. Lady Gaga did better. <laughs> she had 4 million and 600 some thousand followers. Also last Thursday, when the president of, the, of Russia, Medvedev, visited President Obama in the White House. President Obama said to him, since both of us belong to the Twitter community, maybe we can forget about the hotline telephone between the White House and the Kremlin. Facebook, as it was pointed out, has about five million members in the community. They also have their popularity contest. And unfortunately, President Obama is also a bit behind Lady Gaga. <laughs> Look it up, Google it. So now let me go back 